Hi, this is Neil Walters with biztalk-training.com. In this video, I want to try to answer a fairly simple question, what is biztalk? And we'll also talk about what biztalk is not. First of all, what is biztalk? We know that, for example, C Sharp is basically a programming language, .NET is a development framework, Microsoft Word is a word processor, and Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet. So think about the question for a minute, what is biztalk? Well, these might have been some of your answers, but basically BizTalk is not just simply these things. It is not a RAD tool, although some people might, uh, th well, basically it sometimes will help you develop a uh, deployment of additional trading partners faster after you've done your initial development. It's not just a B2B tool, and it's not an EAI tool, just that alone. It's not really a programming language. And as someone said, it's not a toy because it requires SQL and several BizTalk servers to run and deploy in a production environment. So again, I ask the question, what is BizTalk? So here is one possible answer. A biz, basically, BizTalk is a business process server or a BizTalk process execution language. BizTalk out of the box provides for adapters, pipelines, development tools, monitoring tools, and administration tools. So in some of the upcoming slides, we're going to talk about more about business processes and what that means to you. So first of all, what does BizTalk provide out of the box? It has adapters, which can include technical adapters for various protocols, such as HTTP, FTP, file, MSMQ, SOAP, and so on. And then there are line of business adapters, which will give you things like HIPAA, uh, Medicaid-type data, uh, SAP, you know, various... Uh, ERP type systems, maybe PeopleSoft, Oracle, those type of, of adapters. And then it has pipelines which allow you to do encryption, decryption, disassembly, debatching, validation according to XML schemas, or even convert a flat file to an XML data file. It includes development tools that plug into Visual Studio. It includes monitoring tools, which is basically called HAT, Health and Activity Tracking. It includes administrative tools, the BizTalk Admin Console. Within the uh, BizTalk Visual Studio environment, you can create maps, XSLT maps. And so there's a mapping tool, a GUI, graphical user interface mapping tool that has functoids. And then a big part of BizTalk is BAM, Business Activity Monitoring. And actually another one would be BAS, Business Activity Services, which allow you to have trading partners. So I'm going to give you a few definitions from Wikipedia because this is not really a, a business process course per se. It's really more of a BizTalk course. But you need to have the context of where BizTalk fits into the business process world. So first of all, what is BPM? And excuse me for just reading this to you, but instead of, again, writing a whole BPM course, I'm just going to give you some quotes from Wikipedia. Business process management is an emerging field of knowledge and research at the intersection between management and information technology encompassing methods, techniques, and tools to design, enact, control, and analyze operational business processes which involve humans, organizations, applications, documents, and other sources of information. The term operational business processes refers to repetitive business processes performed by organizations in the context of their day-to-day -day operations, as opposed to strategic decision-making processes which are performed by the top-level management of an organization. BPM differs from business processes sorry, differs from business process reengineering, which was a management approach popular in the 90s, in that it does not aim at one-off revolutionary changes to business processes, but at their continuous evolution. In addition, BPM usually combines management methods with information technology. So one of the basic concepts here is the uh, C-level officers, CIO, CEO, COO, those type guys, they can set the goals of the business, and those can be implemented with these various business processes. And then you monitor and execute those business processes. You, you execute them with software, and then you monitor them typically with software. So some other definitions here. What is a process? A business process or a business method is a collection of interrelated tasks which solve a particular issue. There are three types of business processes. One, management processes. These are the processes that govern the operation of a system. Typical management processes include corporate governor, governance and strategic management. Number two, there are operational processes which constitute the core business and create the primary value stream. 
Typical operational processes are purchasing, manufacturing, marketing, and sales. These are typically what we're going to try to, to accomplish in the BizTalk world. And then there are supporting processes which support the core processes. Example include accounting, recruitment, and IT support. A business process can be decomposed into several sub-processes which have their own attributes but also contribute to achieving the goal of the super process. The analysis of a business process typically includes the mapping of processes and sub-processes down to activity level. Business process modeling notation, which we'll talk about on an upcoming slide, can be used for drawing business processes in a workflow. And there are tools that will let you do that in Visio, as we will demonstrate on other videos. Now, what is BPA versus BPM? So BPA is business process automation. An area of discussion exists as to whether BPA is a distinct field of activity in its own right or merely a subset of a wider activity known as BPM, business process management. Given the similarity in terminology, it is not surprising that most casual observers would believe that to be closely related, believe them to be closely related if not identical. However, to experts in these areas, they carry very distinct meanings, even if they are ultimately complementary concepts. To explain this further, it is necessary to summarize the, value, the views of each camp. First, the BPM camp asserts that before any process can be automated, it is necessary to define, often at a very strategic, strategic level or enterprise-wide, all of the business processes running inside an organization. From this, the processes can be redefined and, where necessary, optimized, including automation. So this is where a, a business process consultant can come in and actually help you to document what your current business processes are. The BPA camp uh, states that until a process is automated, there's really no value in analyzing and defining it, and that the cycle of business change is so rapid that there simply isn't time to define every process before choosing which ones to address with automation, and that delivering immediate benefits creates more value. There's no consensus. There's no consensus among which, amongst which view will prevail. However, it can be seen that both perspectives are at least complementary to some extent. Process improvement methodologies, such as Lean Manufacturing and Six Sigma, appear to align well with the BPA view of the world, as they constantly look for incremental opportunities to make processes more efficient and reduce defects. However, these methodologies can also be used downstream of a BPM deployment. Now, what is BEPL? BEPL is a business process execution language. It's a business process modeling language that is executable. However, BEPL omits certain semantics and process constructs. Therefore, it is not possible in BEPL to model and execute all conceivable business processes. For this reason, BEPL is often used in conjunction with programming languages, for example, Java, or extended by the proprietary scripting languages by various commercial implementations of workflow or integration broker engines, which is kind of where BizTalk Server fits in. In most practical cases, therefore, the lack of completeness and formality of BEPL means that processes, processes designed with it need to be extended or compiled to code similar to traditional programming. This denudes BEPL of many of the advantages purported for it by vendors. The origins of BEPL can be traced to WSFL and Xlang. And so in BizTalk, we also often talk about the Xlang engine. It is serialized in XML and aims to enable programming in the large. The concepts of programming in the large and programming in the small distinguish between two aspects of writing the type of long-running asynchronous process that one typically sees in business processes. BEPL was developed by IBM and Microsoft to compete with an earlier language, BPML, developed by the BPMI or BPML.org. And that's the Business Process Management Initiative. Sorry, that was BPMI. The reason the reasons are debated, but life likely, but the most likely cause was personalities in the various camps who could not uh, reach agreement on details. Unlike Beppel, whose roots were in workflow theory, BPML was inspired by the PI calculus. This afforded to BPML a complex and formalized semantic. Powerful implementations were emerging in the marketplace, and this worried IBM and Microsoft, who needed, to con who needed control of the standards governing the development of their application servers. Today, the differences between BEPL and BPML in the past are largely academic. BEPL syntax won out. BPML semantics won out. The power of IBM and Microsoft 
carried the day with the name Beppel. Beppel is evolving slowly into BPML. This is inevitable since BPML was formerly complete. And so BizTalk does provide a Beppel interface or Beppel plugin for Visio where you can actually generate your first cut orchestrations with it. But we will demonstrate that in a, another video and I've never found it to be really that useful. I would much rather prefer to use BPMN which we will now talk about. So there's business process modeling notation is a standardized graphic notation for drawing business processes in a workflow. It was developed by the also the BP the Business Process Management Institute, BPMI, and is now being maintained by the Object Management Group, also called OMG, since the two organizations merged in 2005. Its current adopted version is 1.0, and there's a 1.1 which has a few enhancements, and then they have a proposed one for version 2.0. The primary goal of BPMN is to provide a standard notation that is readily understandable by all business stakeholders. This would be basically developers or end users or management. These business stakeholders include business analysts who create and refine the processes, the technical developers responsible for implementing the processes, and the business managers who monitor and manage the processes. Consequently, BPMN is intended to serve as a common language to bridge the communication gap that frequently occurs between business process design and implementation. Currently there are sources of business process modeling languages, tools, and methodologies. Or, sorry, scores of these. Um, I believe I heard once there is at least 40 to 50 different implementations of BPNN. The adoption of BPMN standard notation will help unify the expression of basic business process concepts, for example, public and private processes, choreographies, as well as advanced modeling concepts such as exception handling and transaction compensation. So now another question that often comes up is how does BizTalk differ from Workflow Foundation? So Workflow Foundation came out uh, I think it was basically this year, 2007, when we're, I'm still recording these videos in 2007. Um, so when .NET 3.0 became official, maybe it was actually late 2006, but anyway, throughout 2007 it's become a little more popular. SharePoint actually uses Windows Workflow. Um, and if you look at Windows Workflow, it looks very similar to an orchestration. So what is the difference? Well, first of all, BizTalk is enterprise level. BizTalk has unified tracking and logging through HAT and BAM. BizTalk has admin tools, Workflow does not. BizTalk has mapping, and believe it or not, WF has no mapping capabilities. So in WF, you would actually have to write your own map, or actually it's not even called a map, it would just be a transformation using XSLT, which is a uh, kind of a whole other language to learn, basically. And with BizTalk, you can use a GUI to create your XSLT for you using the mapping tool. BizTalk has numerous adapters, which we mentioned before both for the technical protocol adapters and the LOB, the line of business adapters. WF does not have any adapters, but it can call web services, so you could basically write your own adapters. Uh, BizTalk has pipelines, Workflow does not. So basically, Workflow is an SDK, a foundation, or a platform, any one of those words would kind of fit it, for creating your own workflow-based applications, which must have a container in which to run. Workflow is within an application. BizTalk spans many applications. BizTalk scalability is well proven. In Workflow, the developer must basically allow for and test for his own scalability. And from this uh, Brian Loskin's blog, sorry if I mispronounced that, the intended audience for Workflow is primarily independent software vendors, people that need to include workflow as part of their applications. Some examples of these would be Office 12, uh, which might include SharePoint, BizTalk in a post BizTalk 2006 version, which probably will be 2008, we're all guessing, PageFlow and ASP.NET, or some line of business systems such as uh, Customer Relations Management, Dynamics, etc. So in this video we've talked about how basically BizTalk is a BPM server, Business Process Management Server, or execution language. And we briefly talked about how BizTalk differs from workflow.